What's it like riding to work on an e-bike? Plenty of people already do it. Even more are thinking about starting. So in this video, we're going to tell you everything you wish you'd known before you get one. And it's not just me talking about it. Canyon have just launched a new e-gravel bike, the Grizzle On, and they sent one for us to try out. It could make the perfect bike to commute on as well as for riding for fun. So Matt here, a regular bike commuter, has swapped his usual bike for this e-bike to see what happens. Has he ridden more? Has he ridden faster? Has he run out of battery? One of the primary concerns for a lot of people, I think, is the battery life. Is it gonna last? And it is easy to see why this causes anxiety, but remember, first of all, that this is not like an electric car. Were you ever to run out of battery, you will not get stranded. You simply ride it like a normal bike. But honestly, you only realize how little you need to worry about the battery when you start riding with one. This bike has a 400 watt hour battery concealed here in the down tube. And that's kind of typical for a good e-bike. How long that will last depends entirely on what you ask it to do. I mean, if you ride up a steep hill in full power mode, you will go through the battery faster than if you ride on the flat in eco mode. Now, what you need to know though, is simply that you can see how much battery you've got left on the display. In this case, it's on the top tube. Some e-bikes have like an LCD display on the handlebars, and they might also show how much range you've got left, depending on the mode you're in. I find you don't need that so much. How long the battery lasts is something you quickly get a feel for, particularly if you're doing a regular route like a commute. You just get into a routine of doing in, out, in, out, and then put it on charge. It becomes innate. Yeah, the battery, the battery thing's been less stressed than I thought it would be really. So I do 20K each way. I can certainly get 80K of my commuting done and still have battery left. Currently cruising at 27, 28K an hour. Pretty standard. After 22K each way, so 44K of commuting, I've still got three bars of battery left on the bike. Normally, when cycling to work, you would want to travel light, because any added weight you have to carry under your own steam. But an epiphany we very quickly had on e-bikes is that weight simply doesn't matter. The bike itself, of course, weighs a little bit more than a normal bike because it's got a battery and a motor, but that means that you can add more weight to it without changing the way it feels to ride. Plus, because there is so much power in this motor, if you want it, that the bike still zips away from traffic lights and zooms up hills, no matter how much weight you add to it. So that could be carrying more stuff to work to make you more comfortable for the ride or for when you get there, or it could be adding more stuff to the bike itself to make it more comfortable or potentially even safer. So you've got these incredible integrated lights at the back here, you've got integrated storage, you can get an option which has got built-in mud guards or a pannier rack. This has got a suspension fork. It's got wider sides. All of the things that add a little bit of weight, but that absolutely don't matter because you only get the benefits from them. Ah, oh, the lights on the bike are amazing. Obviously, being integrated, there's no reason not to leave them on all the time. So I do, I have done. They're really nicely positioned as well. They're really nice little units. Always love my commute, especially on days like this. Cool bike, cool sunset, loving it. Do e-bikes make riding easier? Oh yes, 100%, even for an experienced cyclist, they absolutely do. But for everyone, in fact, I think it's fair to say they completely transform the experience of cycling. Now, I'm not saying that non-e-bikes suck, of course I'm not saying that, but let's at least recognize that e-bikes are transformative. Fitness, age, weight are no longer barriers to riding. And actually, it's not just the motor either. Because the bike weighs a little bit more, it feels sturdier and gives you more confidence. Plus, manufacturers like Canyon here 
at designing the bikes to be easier to ride, to be more confidence inspiring. And so it is simpler as well as fun. By the way, just to let you know, that hill is unbelievably steep. Just in case it didn't come across on camera. Yeah, I do actually feel safer in traffic. I mean, there's two parts to that. One is the pulling away from lights is easier. Like, you just get that nudge with the motor that just means you're confident that you're gonna stay ahead of traffic. You're not stressing about clipping in or losing momentum. You just know it's gonna be a real nice steady pull away from the lights. So that's really cool. Uh, and then the other bit is sometimes in busier bits of traffic, you just feel confident that you're gonna be able to maintain the same speed as the traffic around you, you know, regardless of what happens. I actually feel like I've probably become a sort of slightly politer, nicer rider, because I'm not stressing about momentum. E-bikes are more costly than a non-e-bike version. It's easy to see why. Batteries are expensive, the materials in them are expensive, and there's a lot of technology going on here. But I think it's important to put e-bike costs into context. So I saw a statistic that said that on average, a car owner in the United States spends $2,200 maintaining it every year. Now, that's not even adding fuel into the equation as well. So you can see quickly that an e-bike makes sense. If you're not using a car and you are using an e-bike, you will very quickly save money. Now, how much will this cost to keep running? Anything from naught to a couple of hundred a year, I'd have thought, depending on how much you ride it and the conditions you're riding in. But brake pads, tires, chains are probably the ones that you'd most frequently have to look at. They're easy to replace in the context of a car, very, very cheap indeed. As for the battery and the motor, the most expensive bits of the bike, in my own experience of owning a Bosch-powered e-bike, I've got to say, in two years and a thousand miles of riding, it has never missed a trick. Now, that's clearly one person's experience, and so it's of limited value. Maybe I got lucky. So I checked in with the e-bike guru, Steve Jones, from our sister channel, EMBN. He said that a Bosch motor should be good for about 50,000 miles. Now, as for the battery, as I mentioned earlier, this is a 400 watt hour battery, which will cost about 20 pence to charge from empty. Compared to a car traveling a similar distance, of course, it depends on what you're using, but that could be about 10 pounds for fuel. And then in terms of keeping it sweet, Bosch say that it should last for about 1,000 charges or about 10 years. So let's say you do 40 miles on a charge, you should be able to get a couple of laps in of the planet. When I commute in without a motor, sort of regardless of how easy I try and go, I'll always need a shower when I get to the other end. You know, you can't, can't go easy enough. Whereas on this one, if you just knock it back a little bit, then, and, and let the motor take some of the strain, then you're cruising along at 15 miles an hour without putting in too much effort. For many people, e-bikes are not about going faster. They're about doing something that you otherwise wouldn't do, namely riding a bike, which I suppose actually makes them faster. But anyway, what I was really interested to know is whether in Matt's case, it had made him faster or whether in fact it had made any difference at all. Yeah, well, the, the question of whether I was faster is an interesting one. Like, my, my commute is sort of a commute of two halves. The first half is quite urban and stop-start, and then with a couple of hills in the equation as well. I had a great little ride up the uh, first hill today, but I tried turbo mode on a hill for the first time. Blimey, flew up there. So I reckon 25 minutes into my commute, about halfway, I'm two or three minutes faster. But the second half of the commute is flat, on a separated bike path. I normally cruise in the high 20s, maybe 30k an hour, something in that order around here. Currently, I'm sitting on the same speed and enjoying life. No power, it's just a good bike to ride. And on that bit, I'm definitely not faster. But I reckon I'm a minute, a minute and a half faster over the whole ride. You're joining Matt and I together now on one final commute. We don't normally ride to work together, mainly because I'm always late. 
and going flat out, whereas Matt's slightly more organised than me. But today, we're going to make the effort to go the long route, which is awesome. Super, super hilly. And normally it's a little bit too long to do before yeah. work, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I suspect you're going to give me a hard time. Hopefully up the hills I will, yeah. Yeah, all right, let's find out. Okay, here we go. First pair of the day. Right then, let's do it. <laughs> Feel like Andrew Feather at this point. <laughs> yeah, this thing's amazing up little steep pinches like that. What's that? There's some more to come yet. I am on full power mode. It's weird. Riding with him. I'm working hard on the flat to keep up with him. As soon as we get here, I'm getting a I'm getting a rest. Don't think size. Oh, he's coming back. <laughs> Proper good. It's like a rocket ship. Yeah, spending a week with it probably has changed my perspective a little bit on e-bikes. I mean, I think at the start of the week, I'd have said, I don't really need one. And it would have been, it would have been defining whether I need an e-bike or don't need an e-bike. At the end of the week, I'm like, I really enjoy riding one, whether I need it or not. Now, one final point to remember is that an e-bike is for life and not just for commuting. Which is to say that were you to buy a bike like this to ride to work on, I could almost guarantee that you would end up using it way more than that. Because at the end of the day, what you've got is a bike that is flipping good fun to ride. And again, if you got one like this, you would not be confined to city streets either. You can take it away out into the countryside, out into the hills for whatever adventures you fancy. Hopefully you have found this video useful. If you've got any other questions that we haven't answered in this video, then please get involved in the comments section and we will do our best to answer them. I think the biggest take homes for me from this are firstly, you don't really need to worry about the batteries. Like it becomes so easy when you get used to it. And even when you're new to it, actually, it's still easy. The other thing to bear in mind is that e-bikes can be real workhorses. You can load them up with as much weight as you want and it's still zippy and fun to ride. And the other thing as well is that even if you're an experienced cyclist, you still get a benefit to your fitness. So whilst they're easy to ride, you still get exercise on them. Anyway, please give this video a big thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Head over to Canyon's website if you want a little bit more information on this bike, by the way, the new Grizzle On. Not sure I'm going to be able to wrestle it off mat, to be quite honest. <laughs>